Okay, uh, my name is Maxim, uh, and I'm building the zero knowledge business applications at Chronicled. And today I want to share with you something special. And I want to start with the uh, first thing is about saving lives. So, um, 30, up to 30% of uh, medicine worldwide is considered uh, counterfeit. Uh, if you think about it, it's, it's a lot of drugs. And um, that's why uh, US came up with uh, Drug Supply Chain Security Act, uh, which requires uh, interoperable transparent system uh, which, um, of transfer of ownership over uh, medicine from manufacturer to distributor, then to pharmacies, and finally to the patient. So uh, this is uh, the problem or issue we want to tackle with MediLedger project. Uh, and, um, and the blockchain is a natural choice for this kind of uh, applications. Uh, but uh, its benefit is also, um, is also the main problem, uh, namely transparency of the blockchain. Because as soon as Alice, let's say, Alice, Alice Pharmaceuticals tries to uh, transfer uh, 100,000 units of aspirin to Bob, everyone on the blockchain will be able to see that. And this uh, leads to uh, business intelligence loss and also um, uh, competitive advantage loss. So we are trying to solve this problem with uh, something called zero knowledge proof. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I like this one. So, and to, to explain to you what zero knowledge proof is, uh, I want to give a simple experiment. So let's um, let's imagine we have a stick man who wants to prove to you that there is a unicorn in one of those bags. Uh, so what he can do, uh, he can place a board uh, between you and the bag so you don't see them. He can go and pick up a unicorn from one of the bags and he shows to you. So now he, you are convinced, yes, the, the unicorn is somewhere there. Uh, so a stick man puts the unicorn bag and uh, now he's opens the uh, board and uh, now he's happy because he was able to prove to you that unicorn is there but you don't know where it is. Uh, and because there was nothing else in the room, you are convinced. Uh, so we are using uh, a little bit tweaked version of this one uh, to, uh, for, for MediLedger project. Uh, so Participants. Here is Alice Pharmaceuticals, Bob's Distribution, and Carol the Pharmacist. To the right, you can see transactions on the blockchain and also the blockchain state. So it's, as of now, it's empty. So I'm going to zoom in here. Oops, too much probably. Yeah, so Alice wants to register some aspirin. And uh, she adds its uh, serial number. It's uh, 001, and uh, so it's now added to her system. As you can see, it's a composite identity, so it consists of company ID as well as uh, identity of the product itself. So now Alice uh, registers it to the blockchain. So what she's doing, she's actually generated zero knowledge proof uh, that unicorn is there. Yeah? So basically, it's that my transaction is correct, that all rules are followed. And uh, as you can see, transaction is broadcasted on the blockchain. You can see its details over here. It's accepted, so it means it's correct. And on the blockchain, you can see there is just random artifacts. You cannot learn anything from this information. Now Alice, um, a bit. Uh, now Alice tries to actually transfer uh, ownership to the distribution, to the Bob. So genera she generates another proof, basically approving that uh, Bob is able to accept ownership over this uh, aspirin. Uh, so as you can see, transaction broadcasted again. Uh, and uh, it was accepted by the network. So finally, Bob um, delivers it to, to the Carol Pharmaceuticals, uh, pharmacist, sorry, and uh, he, tran uh, he transfers ownership to Carol. Uh, so he generates another zero knowledge proof, and as you can see, it was accepted. Now let's uh, consider use case when, uh, let's say, Bob, uh, by mistake or trying to cheat, uh, returns, let's say, fake uh, drug back to Alice, uh, like, like it was, original drug. So he generates another zero knowledge proof and tries to broadcast this transaction. So it takes a little bit. So now as you can see, there is an error. So basically blockchain was able to recognize that transaction is not correct and therefore reject the transaction. So as you can see this, uh, as I call it, mishmash of data uh, is in fact was sufficient for blockchain to figure out uh, who is the owner of that particular drug. Uh, so this is uh, ultimate source of truth. 
Okay, and uh, for, for this, uh, for Carol, for, for Bob to be able actually to transfer it, to, to return it to Alice, first Carol needs to transfer it to Bob. So uh, Carol generates another zero knowledge proof, it waits, transaction broadcasts it, and now finally uh, Bob tries to transfer it back to Alice. So as you can see, it was successful and uh, drag is back. Uh, so this is MediLedger, and uh, we are working with some of the most influential uh, companies in pharma space, as you can see on the screen. So another project uh, we are excited about is uh, Responsible Gold. It is concerned with uh, gold supply chain. So basically, it starts with a mine where uh, basically a mix of metals melted into one dory bar, then it's transferred to refinery. Refinery makes it a gold standard, and then it moves to, to a vault. Uh, and as you can see, it's a uh, transcontinent, uh, cross-continent uh, supply chain. So its uh, provenance is very important here. Uh, so we are starting by applying a crypto seal to the gold product. And what's crypto seal is a temper evidence sticker. So if you peel it off from gold bar, it's uh, just evident it uh, uh, breaks into many pieces. Uh, also, it's a cryptographic microchip, which have its own self-generated key pair. And also, it has near-field communication capabilities, so you are able to verify it uh, by the phone. Uh, and how it works on the, on the blockchain side. So here we have, again, uh, four different participants, a miner, refinery, vault, and customer. Uh, so miner tries to register this um, Dory bar. Just so you can see. Uh, he registers it with a public key. Uh, let's say, just for simplicity. Um, so now... He registers again, a generate zero knowledge proof to register the Dory bar. Okay, now it's registered. Now he's able to uh, transfer it to refinery. So here it's in refinery, and refinery sees who actually uh, created, who registers this asset, and now refinery doing its own job, and they actually want to produce a gold bar from it. So they consume this asset on the blockchain as well as in, in real world. So they attach a new uh, crypto seal to it with another public key, and they transform it on the blockchain. So basically, by this, they destroy the Dory bar, so it no longer exists, and nobody can transfer it to anyone else. So no counterfeit is possible here. And as you can see in provenance now, uh, there is a uh, gold bar which have been created from this particular Dory bar with this identity produced by this uh, mine, miner. Uh, finally, we can actually transfer it to the vault for storage. And uh, again, another knowledge proof, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, so now it's broadcasted, vault can, can see uh, who, who was the miner and who was the refiner. So he have whole uh, visibility to whole provenance. And at this stage, uh, G-Coin can be uh, minted, so it will be linked to this particular gold bar. And finally, if customer who owns the coins, the G-Coins, wants to withdraw the gold bar, he can request uh, this from the vault. So vault transfers ownership to the particular customer. Again, on the blockchain, you have no information, so no knowledge uh, you can gain from this data. So finally, transfers transferred to the customer, and let's consider a faulty use case where a vault tries to return it to refinery, uh, but not being um, owner of this asset. So he generates another zero knowledge proof. And as you can see, blockchain rejected uh, this transaction. Um, so this is uh, responsible gold, and uh, what you just saw is built on top of Quorum ZSL, which is part of EEA stack. My name is Maxim. Thank you.